everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, I have a special guest, and we are going to talk about becoming a prioritized warrior, not a panicked warrior. So today, you're going to learn five how-to strategies to prioritize, understand completion is the goal of prioritization, how to shift priorities like warrior create space and bandwidth, check in plan to prevent burnout. So welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 show. I am your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 squash dieters mentality and lose weight for the last time. So if you're a regular to the show, then you know what is going on. Each week I come to you on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So on Tuesday, I give you ways to jumpstart your weight loss journey. And if you're doing all the things and you're frustrated that you still are not seeing your weight go down, I want to invite you to schedule a discovery call with me at shapeitupfitness.com slash call. Your free call is an opportunity to get my expert eye on what is going on and why you aren't getting the results that you say you want. So you can head to shapeitupfitness.com slash call to schedule today. So today is Thursday and the podcast, I am bringing you an incredible guest to give you all the gems that she has. So (laughs) I am so glad that you are spending time with us today. And my special guest today served at Gannon University as an assistant vice president for student engagement and leadership development before opening Switchboard Networking Boutique in Westminster, Colorado in September of 2016. She's a small business coach and completion strategist. Her go-to phrase is get out of your head and onto paper. She is on a mission to help women break the cycle of being panicked, lost on what next steps to take, and accepting overwhelm of projects and tasks never being completed as being normal. So welcome, Connie Kircher, to the show. I am so excited to have you here today. Yes, thank you, thank you. I'm excited for our time today. Yeah. So Connie, tell everyone a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the business that you're doing. Yeah. So my background and I would say formal training was in higher education. So I was working my way up um, to um, senior administration level in the space of student engagement, leadership, program development, um, worked a lot on strategic planning for five, 10, 15 years. And I really dove into that my entire 20s. I was on the fast track of how do I become a president of a university in 10 years? Like that was, that was the path, that was the mission. And as I wove that path, as I walked that path, I really learned that I have such an entrepreneurial spirit. So I love the coaching. I love the training. I love the strategy. And I would run circles around a lot of my colleagues and go, all right, you know, I opened up a department, got it started, got the infrastructure. And it'd be like, and that was only in quarter one. So I recognized (laughs) that the infrastructure of higher education was not something that um, was serving me well for probably the next 30, 40, 50, you know, decades. So, um, so yeah, so I, then I branched off into full-time coaching and consulting, really coming from a data-driven approach, but still with fun and engagement. And you can feel the energy that I have, right? Like that's the space that I really wanted to blend the two worlds of, you know, I haven't owned a TV in 10 years, right? Like I'm constantly in research mode The how do we make this applicable to the audience, but still weave it in so that it actually can be something we use on a weekly basis. We actually can be excited about creating some new habit cycles, time management strategies in place, where it's not just something that we talk about. We're actually able to get to application. Yeah. I think that's huge because uh, there's a lot of lip service to goals and dreams and everything. And it's really putting it to paper and like, okay, let's go. Yeah. You know, yep. Very out. practical, but still fun and exciting and make it your own, um, in that space of creativity, but really giving tools for, for women, for men, right. To be able to just go, okay, I've got this next step on, on vision on what, maybe what that looks like, but I cannot control some of the factors. I don't know how to manage the time. And that's the reason they're not putting their expertise in the world. So that's why I'm like, I'm on mission to help fill in those blanks of the tools. I'm not the expert craft person. I'm not the expert <laughs> wellness person, right? Like all the places where I'm an expert, like it's amazing. But where I come in is building that infrastructure and how do you create the milestones along to complete? Yeah. And I, I think I know a lot of women come to me and they're like, I just don't have time. I don't have time to do 
what they think they need to get done in order to lose weight or whatever their goals are. So I'm so glad that you're on today. Yeah. Um, so how do you overcome the perception that you, you know, I don't have enough time. Yep. So I think there's, there's five categories or five ways, right? Like we're going to talk very practical today and have that conversation. And the very first one is recognizing that panicked, worried state is just a state of mind. It is not a norm. The battlefield of your calendar is real, right? Like your time, your energy, your bandwidth, your capacity can only go so many ways. That is a true statement, but you not being able to control that is a fallacy, right? You not being able to be proactive and excited about managing your time is where we're trying to move us over. So I'm very realistic to say the 168 hours that we're managing between self-care a week, personal time, sleep time, productivity, time with the family, time in the community, those are real factors, but I'm a big believer of creating some type of structure that works for you. I'm not a big believer of like, here's the canned approach. I want you to figure out what the tools will look like. And then you manipulate as you need you, you um, incorporate as you need, you practice some of them and then you get more, you know, stronger skill set. So that exact question is recognizing it is a skill set. We are not going to get it the first week of time blocking. We're not going to get it in the first quarter of being in a new season of life with the kiddos or a business or a new goal on your calendar. It's not going to happen in a 10 day cycle. So just being really mindful of to develop a skill set takes time and it's a skill set. It's not a personality quirk. It's not something what's wrong with me. It's a skill set that we have yet to develop fully. Yeah. I think that um, most women feel like they need to get it right on the first time yeah, or maybe the second <laughs> if they're being lenient. But other than that, and um, like a lot of women that, you know, I work with too, it's the same thing. It's like they come in and they, you know, want to snap their fingers and there it is. And that's not always the case. And I always right. kind of relate it to like learning a new language. Like, yep. uh, you know, when you try to go speak French, yep, it doesn't come out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And even when you think you're fluent and you talk to somebody from France, they're like, what are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I always say like, so when I always go the framework of not panicked, right. But prioritize warrior, that doesn't mean prioritize perfection, right? Mm -hmm. Prioritize warriors every day as your day falls apart. And this may be like 10 minutes into the podcast, you're already <laughs> telling me my day can fall apart. I'm like, yes, it will fall apart. <laughs> Every day you're approaching the calendar, the battlefield, your priorities from a warrior mindset, a no guilt, no shame, fully confident that these are my priorities. And I'm showing up being my calendar. My calendar is dictating my priorities. I'm putting my priorities on the calendar to, to be in alignment of that. That's what I mean by prioritize warrior, no yeah. guilt, no shame showing up for what you need to complete each day. Yeah. That's huge for women. Um, again, back to weight loss. It's like, you know, if you're not a size, whatever you think you should be, there's so much shame and judgment yeah. on that. Um, I also know cause clients come to me and, and time management is definitely, I actually coached somebody on time management the other day. Um, but like, I think that unless you really look at your schedule, like what you're actually spending time on, you'll be able to see what you're actually prioritizing. Yeah. And, uh, and if you're not getting the results that you want, then I have a pretty good guess that you're not prioritizing, prioritizing what it is that you want to yeah. get. So yeah. share with us some of the, um, the shifts and the, yep. Yep. And the tips. Yeah. So the very first one I love to just encourage clients to look at, and again, it's, it's moving from the prioritized warrior mindset where this isn't going to be perfect the next month you look at. Okay. But the very first one is building in catch all days. So on a monthly basis, that's the cadence I would encourage is that you're building in a buffer day about three times out of the four weeks, right? Where you are not available to the humans. You're not open to appointments. You're not even trying to build in amazing self-care time. These are three buffer days that as your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday appointments get rescheduled, kiddos are sick, something took longer on a project you're working on, you have a Thursday that week to fill in the blank, to realign, to reassess. What I find is most women, their calendars 
are triple booked Mm -hmm. with no transition time and no debrief time, right? You go to the grocery store, there's still things to debrief called put it away, check if the receipt was right. There's still time there, right? That's never on the calendar, (laughs) right? So what I encourage with these catch all days, what I'm trying to teach is that your calendar should be broken up in 33% increments. 33% of your calendar on a monthly basis should be in preparation, prepping for the meetings, prepping for the kiddos activities, prepping for your own priorities, your meal planning, right? Your your time um, of what your deliverables are going to be. 33% of the calendar should be the actual things like do the things, go to the meetings, get to the gym, go do the kiddos activities. Then 33% is the cleanup of those, right? The debrief of those that I met so-and-so, but I need to contact her. I went to the meeting. There's action items after, and I will be honest and everyone on the, on the podcast today, look at your calendar real time. If you looked at if 33% of preparation, 33% of implementation and 33% of debrief, if that, if you created some of that bandwidth and some of those catch all days, that's that last 33% bucket, would that help you not bottleneck your priorities? Mm. So give me thoughts on that and your preparation side, your debrief side. I think we get almost obsessed with the implementation and there's a whole nother 66% of preparation in post. Give me, give me some thoughts on that. Yeah. I think, um, it's interesting that you brought that up because I know when we met last week, um, I had a migraine and yeah. for those, you know, who follow the podcast, I get migraines quite frequently. And actually last week I decided moving forward, I was going to add in buffer days for my migraines because they're cyclical. They come every month and they last from three to five days. So like, Usually it's on a weekend. So it's only like a couple of days out of the like work schedule, but you know, they're going to be easy days for me. And I think that as women, we have to be proactive in our schedule because stuff comes up, yep. you know, and like to beat yourself down because you're like, I have to force myself to do, you know, like in my case, migraine stuff, I'm not going to force myself through it because it's just going to make me more sick. But, um, but yeah, looking at that, and I love that, you know, we kind of forget that those two ends of like, yes. you know, driving to the grocery store and then unloading the stuff, <laughs> you yeah, know, but it's, oh, it's just an hour thing. I'm like, well, actually it's about a three hour process right. to, <laughs> the list to actually like final bag in the freezer. Right. Yeah. But, but again, we collapse time because we're so trained. So this is kind of tip two. We're so trained in multitasking mm-hmm. women. I'm just going to give you the grace and space. We were lied to in the 1990s where the <laughs> devices and the widgets and the calendars and the electronic, all the pieces were supposed to be, we're going to create more productivity with these multitasking tools. All the research shows is we're 40% less productive in 2022 than we were five, 10, 15 years with all these modalities. So the second piece I'm gonna really encourage everyone to look at is monotasking. Mm -hmm. That's maybe a new verbiage, that may be a new term, Google it all the ways, but being really obsessed with monotasking, deepening your engagement in what you're focusing on. So when you're in mom mode, you are hyper diligent focus and you don't have attention residual. That's a new phenomenon now that we have attention residual from listening to the podcast right now. You still are focusing on what you were doing right before. You have attention for lunch. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, You still have attention residual. So it's a skill set to practice monotasking, but it would be the second strategy. I would get very concrete if you want to take building the time management muscle more, more fruitfully. Yeah. I love that because, and I don't know, maybe, you know, the stats on this, but I remember reading a while ago that they said you lose like seven seconds every time you switch from one thing to the next, like your brain has to catch up. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, And I know for me, quite a few years ago, it was a big shift to be like with my calendar. It's like, you know, when I block off time to create my um, regular podcast, you know, I block off that time and that's the only thing I'm doing. Like, I'm not checking Facebook. I'm not answering emails. I'm not nothing. Even when my kids come up, I'm like, nope, you need an appointment. (laughs) Yeah, it's an appointment based. Everyone in my circles know, am I on the appointment on Wednesday? Is that your personal day, Connie, or is that a work day? I'm like, yes, very good call. Yeah, yeah. Um, The other thing too is, and I, I feel like as I get older, like being present is 
is so important. And whether that's with the kids, whether it's just being by yourself and taking a couple minutes to just decompress. Um, but being present in whatever you're doing, I think we, you know, we, it's almost like life slows down a little bit more when you're more present in what you're doing. And you can only do that when you're doing one thing, you know, when you're really focused. And you are always doing one thing. So people go, I'm great at multitasking and I'm going, your brain literally only knows how to focus on one thing though. That is how your brain is wired. Every, every, you know, brain, brain analysis will show, okay, I'm going to focus on, you know, reading this book, but have the TV on still try to hold a conversation on, you know, a passive webinar that's happening. Your brain only can put attention to one thing, but what's happening is that attention is at 25% capacity because it is so over delivered in decision fog of Connie. You control the brain, you control me. Where do you want my attention to be? And for for being a prioritized warrior, I have to understand that for me to manage me, I have to be very clear and very much so, this is the battle we're attacking today. Or I always like to think about it as kind of the third technique of, you know, we have conveyor belts in our brain. I think it's a very practical way to think about this. And we would not run a warehouse of, business, life, all the deliverables and keep one person on the floor and have 17 conveyor belts just happening, going awry. We would never like that visual. We'd be like, yeah, OSHA would call us in ASAP, right? I, I'm we seeing it. I love Lucy uh, skit going yeah, through my head or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we would never do that in a practical, let's make a business work. We let's right. Cause that's, that's my expertise. That's what I like to use the metaphors for. So why do we do that with the 14 conveyor belts that they're there, but we do not need to run them at the same time every day. So one encouragement, the third technique is being able to get Mondays are maybe themed where it's your personal day. It's the laundry, it's the grocery shopping, it's the bills, it's the budget, it's the personal phone calls to family members. And that's the conveyor belt you complete Tuesday. You wake up and it's just a shift of making sure all of the business, hardcore planning. Again, if you're working from home, business meetings happen, networking happens, but you keep really diligent in that conveyor belt to completion bell gets done hang the hard hat up go home right then maybe wednesday is your um you know marketing day or again um maybe a transition day but just being really thoughtful that the conveyor belts cannot all be on at the same time but your brain is desiring direction Mm -hmm. and it's desiring a finish line to know hey did i do good connie did i complete what you wanted me to complete today we all love our little gold stars. <laughs> yes. yes. And we want that, right? We want that. We <laughs> desire that. Our brain wants that more than I think we ever, ever realize that we think that's maybe like a, you know, kiddish technique, or maybe it's a, you know, elementary technique. And, you know, what are the strategies that I always lean into is gamification. Mm-hmm. We want to see an external cue that what I'm doing to complete these five critical action steps, these three steps on a project that cannot be in your head. Your brain doesn't know you're making progress on that. So it can be a paper chain that again, we think, oh, that's so elementary. I have run entire fitness competitions. So like I've done fitness competitions for the last two years, 12 weeks of prep, never missed twice, very stringent. You know, it felt like a part-time job. I ran that by making sure I had sticky note chains I did not break right? 24 meals prepped by making sure they were on a paper chain and I ripped them off as I did them. So I would love to hear your feedback of other creative ways too. Cause when we talked, it was that gamification, like there's magic in the mundane of doing it over and over and over. So I would love your perspective on that. Seinfeld, um, had something on like, don't break the chain, yeah. um, in a calendar. And I used to, before I had my app, um, cause I have a shape it up app that I give, uh, my clients workouts to, so they can do them whenever and wherever they want. Um, but getting a calendar and like taking a blue pen and a red pen and like blue pen is like, yes, this is, I ate the way I need to that day. I did my workout. And then when you see the X's throughout the thing, and that's what I love about the app that I have too, because it, um, it does kind of gamify it a little bit. Like anytime you have a personal best, you get this, like, you know, fist pump, um, type thing and things like that. And, you know, as humans, we, we want validation. 
you yeah. know, and granted having outside validation, I think is fantastic. I mean, I've talked about that on the podcast. Um, I was a professional ballet dancer in my twenties and like, I loved, you know, getting on stage and hearing everyone clap and, and all that stuff, but you also need to validate yourself. And I think when, um, like you were talking about, um, you know, the conveyor belts and everything, I find it interesting too, is like, as you figure out which is your main conveyor belts that you want to focus on, all the other stuff starts falling off. The stuff that you think is so important and it's not, it's not important. And I think that we all try to hold on to as many things as possible, many tasks as we can, because we think that they're so important. I'm sorry, but sometimes the laundry just doesn't get folded. <laughs> sometimes the dishes stay in the sink and are dirty. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, making that all like a game, I am all about, you know, and, and we got to remember and- that a lot of time management is we know what we need to complete. We're very cognizant of that. That is usually not the battle that needs to be won. It's the mundane. It's the, we're bored in it. It's the, I need to do it six times this week. It's I've been doing this for five years. Right? So one of the ways I work with clients is success will drive motivation. And I don't mean just numerical success, right? With dollars, with weight, with, you know, progression percentage wise, I literally mean by a cue to be able to see 24 check boxes is a wonderful way to start practicing. Oh my gosh, I was successful in that. I did cre- create some momentum in that. So I'm a big believer that success will always drive motivation, but you need an external tracker to see that. And the second piece is confidence is built by completion. So if you start your day and you're kind of in a panic state, you're at 40% energy because you got a couple less hours of sleep. Family is happening. Stress factors are higher. I really encourage you to get super clear on that day to day basis. What is completion look like today? And most of my clients can't answer that. I'm like, okay, so you woke up today. What is a successful finish line for today? Look like. Yeah. And I think too, it doesn't have to be this huge thing either. No. Like it could be like, I'm making my best factors today. (laughs) I'm like, I'm feeding my children today. Yes. And being able to go. So whatever's above and beyond is just, again, additional success factors, but it is helping you remember three critical action steps, right? I'm not a big on to-do list because Mm -hmm. most of us associate to-dos with, I never completed those and a Mm -hmm. lot of guilt and shame. So I don't make to-do lists. I make constructive action steps. And here are my constructive action steps for today. The three, the five deliverables to completion, even if it's phase one out of five phases to complete it. (laughs) At least I know phase one was completed. At least I knew one hour was completed. Yeah. And I think too, when you're first starting out is making that achievable, like, like almost duh achievable, you know, Mm -hmm. just to get to build that. Like I always talk about honoring your commitments to yourself Mm -hmm. because once exactly what you were saying, like the more times you achieve the, the check, the more times you're going to be like, yeah, I can do this. Like, especially with weight loss, you know, like the more times you do the things you or you think the way you need to think that kind of thing. And you can just check it off the, the, you're just reinforcing in your brain. Like, yeah, I've got this. I totally can do this. And that's what you need to succeed. Like hundred percent, all that doubt and worry (laughs) build up. (laughs) And that leads into, we talked about this last week specifically, you know, we were very mindful of, of your audience. And I love your intentionality to be able to say like, okay, what do these women need to hear from time management standpoint? And we did talk about that perception of like, I don't have enough time to even manage my time. How do I make myself a priority? So to your point of being able to be very thoughtful through the day of there are transition times that naturally happen in our day. We need to do a technique called flossing your day. So when we go to the dentist, right? You go and you floss in between the cracks. So you don't have decay built up. Okay. Within your day, I don't know. I had a transition over here, but it's like, it's so (laughs) within your day, within, yeah, yeah. For everyone just listening to the audio, I moved my my hands over to the other side. Um, But in your day, you have those natural breaks that when you shift your day, you know, six to eight can be just your personal time, getting kiddos ready or preparation time. Eight to 12 could be a, you know, business segment. 12 to two could be a 
personal time. And then, you know, maybe a mini vacation day is from two to five. Like every day I have a mini vacation day built into my day. So I have some thoughtful transition times. And then evening is back to family mode. But in between those, I floss my day for 10 minutes and I literally think about anything and I reflect about, and I make it real to go, what happened in today's podcast, my next client that I'm with before I go into workout mode today at noon. So I will floss at 1150 to noon and just sit in my car before I walk into the gym and I will just go, all right, how could I have done that better? What went well? What appointment got scheduled? I have three missed phone calls. What do I need to floss? So I can complete those. I can catch up on those. I can relieve the decay so I can be fully present from 12 to two and be only workout Connie mode. Yeah. I I love all that because I think too, and I think you said this earlier, like, you know, we try to stuff everything into like (laughs) the hours that we have and we all have the same hours. Yeah. You know, like nobody's, nobody's running on a 26 day hour day that I know of. So like you have to really focus in on what you're doing and allow for that buffer time in between, um, that flossing. I love that. Yeah. Um, so Connie, I love all the gems that you have given us today. Yes. Where can people find you and reach out if they want to get yep. into it? Absolutely. So my passion again is working in a one-on-one capacity or in a group setting. I have several programs around time management, prioritized warrior around mind over matter strategies when it comes to completion, when it comes to just that habit of monotasking. So you can um, hop on our website, switchboard NB as a networking boutique dot com. Um, for all the listeners on today's podcast, I'm offering a 30 minute free, what I call, you know, monotasking audit, right. Being able to really look at your calendar, the battlefield and give you some tips and tricks and what has worked. So my lane of expertise, my conveyor belt of expertise is really looking at how do you start becoming more productive, efficient to completion. Um, and so you can go to switchboardnb.com. on there. You can schedule a 30 minute, um, free consult. Awesome. And for those of you who missed that link, don't worry, it'll be in the show notes of the podcast of the video you're watching. It's also on the blog page. It's everywhere. So great. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So this is everyone's favorite time. Yes. Speed round or lightning round, whatever you want to call it. Yes. <laughs> so, the unscheduled side of the me is like, unscheduled. Okay, yes, I yeah, like, right it's going to be good. This is <laughs> learn this skill set today. <laughs> By the way, press to tell you. Um, yeah. So these are just fun questions uh, just to kind of spice it up a little bit. All I right. So cat or dog? Dog. Dog. Any particular dog? Uh, well, I have a Boston little Petey, Petster. So Boston <laughs> Terrier has a special place in my heart. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we've all had some sort of unique job in the past and by unique, usually it's like, I know for me, I had to dress up in a clown outfit and serve pizza back in the day. So do you have any jobs like that, that were like, I think the most unique job that I'm like, is this really what I'm getting like paid for? And like learned so much is I helped put on international conferences and meetings and expos. And for one year, I was in Las Vegas 18 times doing expos, three-day conferences, right? It's, it's the convention capital of the world, right? And so for one year, I'm like, how was I in Las Vegas 18 times <laughs> putting on concerts for people, making sure education tracks happen? Like I look back on that, I'm like, how was that even realistic? I lived part-time in Las Vegas when I lived in Texas. <laughs> so I always look back on that, I'm like, that was unique. So I never really had the bug to go back to Las Vegas that often. <laughs> you crossed that off your list. You're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight <laughs> times a year was plenty. Yeah. Awesome. Um, did you have a favorite toy growing up? Oh my gosh. Um, I was very creative. I wasn't in the doll space. I wasn't in that. So actually I loved, and it's to this day, the <laughs> markers, the pens, the glitter pens, give me some glitter glue. So like I was in that space of a craft room was half of my room. So it wasn't a toy. It was multiple pens, markers like that loved, loved, love. And still, still to this day have like a craft room just for that. 
That's awesome. Yeah. I used, to, I haven't done it in a while, but I'm a big crafter too, uh, yeah. or have been, I guess in the past, yeah. um, yeah. So pens yeah. and glitter pens and highlighters. I mean, all of the erasers, I used to collect erasers, <laughs> but any of that, like organization tools as a kid that, that j- lighted me up. <laughs> my daughter's like that. She's like, well, not so much now she's older, but when she was younger, she's like, can we go to Staples and like <laughs> my more and- folders? Yeah. yeah. Can you know folders? <laughs> Trapper keepers. Come on. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> um, what is your, we'll go favorite inspirational quote. Mm, inspirational quote. Mm, 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 mm. So I'm a big, big believer in and really recognizing that you are your only champion. So any space, whether it be through books, whether it be through literature, scripture, wherever that space comes in for truth is just really recognizing that you are your only champion in a really good way. Like you don't need a significant other to, to make you complete. You don't need the kiddos. You don't need that accolade, you know, accolade or, or, uh, you know, recognition externally. So, and that's something I personally have had to continuously work on too. Is that like, I, my, me being the champion of me, that is the only thing that matters. It's the only tracker that matters. So is that one formal quote? No, but is there like seven pinch boards on that. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So in that space, in that vein of just really recognizing that no other person, no other external title money. Again, I've, I've chased all those things before. None of those will ever complete you. That is something that I really find still grounding inspirational, still growing in. Yeah. Um, so I've talked about on the podcast before of like, we don't really want the thing that we're after, like the weight loss. We want how we feel yeah. being that size. What, you know, like, like, I know you said you're going in a fitness competition. You, you don't necessarily want that prize, that trophy or whatever. There's something behind that, that like, you just want to feel a certain way stepping up on that stage. And, um, yeah. And I think that uh, a lot of people, you know, and like I said earlier, you know, me being a professional dancer, um, outside validation, I mean, wow, that was like, just how I grew up. You walk in and you were judged. Yeah. And if you got validation, you were like you yeah. moved up the ranks <laughs> and know? the process of me again, taking on the fitness competition, just practicing of it was, can I, cause again, I love extrinsic motivation factors. I know I'm very recognition, you know, driven. I love being able to be like, what's the next carrot. I'm very yeah. super aware of that. <laughs> so part of being on this journey was, can I still be, you know, working towards that goal for 12 weeks, do stage time for two and a half hours, have all the photos, all the hair and makeup, have all the fun in the next day, regardless of what placement, like to the point, I didn't even look at the point system. Mm. And from a person that says track every point until your whole entire <laughs> life. Right. Like I was like, I don't even look at the point system for six weeks. Cause I want to see, can I maintain, can I still be like, I was fully proud of the process that got me there and the process to deload. And then I'll look at what that point system was. Yeah. So that is, that is something I'm still continuously like, where do I find recognition? And it's solely from internal. Yes. I love that because, um, now again, for those that are listening, doing a fitness competition and just losing weight to be comfortable in your own skin are two different animals for sure. But, um, like when I work with clients, it's like, don't rely on that scale. Like what is, what is going to motivate you internally to take care of yourself, you know? And it's not the scale. Yeah. The mental wins that I learned through that is, is takeaways that I didn't even even know the blessings would come from those mental wins. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, if you could leave one tip, I know we've, we've, done a Mm. lot of good tips, but if you could give the listeners one tip takeaway, what would you say? So I'm going to go back to practical ladies. When you feel like you're in panicked state, you're overwhelmed. You don't know what next step to take the kiddos, the, the stressor factors. Again, you're very aware of that. My very one tip would be get out of your head and onto paper. There is all the research that says when you start transcribing What, what do I need to do to approach that conversation? How do I want to tackle, you know, the 16 deliverables that are due by tomorrow? I feel overwhelmed with how the house is looking, get out of your head onto paper that already lessens your anxiety and perception of overwhelm by 50%. And then the second application step of that is just pick three to complete. 
So the first is the brain dump. The second is build confidence by picking three to complete a small win will help you create momentum to that next motivation. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. 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 awesome episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great time today. Thank you for your time. And thank you for, yeah, just facilitating these conversations for women. Thank you for that space. Not a problem. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Connie, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Everyone have a beautiful week and I guess I will check in with you on the following Tuesday. Have a wonderful day. Wonderful. Thank you again.